Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nam Uche and I'm back again to conclude the question 3 of um, UIA Computer Studies uh, paper 3 2022. Okay, let's jump straight to it. Um, the question says create a database and save as WASC in the folder on the desktop. So you're going to be creating a database and um, the best application we can use in this case is Microsoft Excel and um, Microsoft Access. Okay, so let's uh, quickly create that. Uh, okay, so that's my access, it has loaded, so I'll go to blank database. Um, okay, so this is where you change the name of your database to WASC. Remember, they spelled it all in caps, so uh, written it all in caps as well. So you also need to come here to navigate to your desktop, okay? Navigate to your desktop where you created your folder. I didn't create a folder. So that's it, desktop, and then you go to the folder where you created I didn't create a folder. So I'll just drop it there on the text. But it is, imp it is important for you to create your folder. Very, very important. Okay, so that all your work gets to one location. All right. So I'll do OK and then I'll do create. So that is that. Now, by default, Microsoft Access is going to um, create a table for you. But this table is not saved yet. All right. So let's switch back to the question. Uh, it says the table with headings as shown in table 2 uh, should have 11 rows. Define the fields appropriately. Save the table as TBL customers. So let's go back here and just do Ctrl S. The table name TBS customers. Saved. TBS customers. All right. Uh, set customer ID as primary key. So let's switch back. So that's that saved. And then for us to set as primary key, we need to go to design view. So just right click on this area. Okay. And then go to design view. Or you come this way under view, design view. So once you do that, you need to create your fields on this end, choose the appropriate data type on this end, okay? All right, um, so this is customer ID. So we'll do customer ID. Next one is uh, first name. I hope I spelled them correctly. Custom, oh, custom ID, not customer ID. Okay, uh, first name. The other one is last name. Telephone and address. Email. Telephone and address. Now let us determine the data types. Uh, customer ID, we can choose to leave it as auto number, except otherwise instructed. Okay, um, let me let me leave it as auto number. So the first name, of course. Okay, when we say auto number, we mean a number that just, that will just be incrementing by itself. So you don't need to type it. As long as you keep uh, populating your table, it will keep increasing. All right. So here is first name. I think it's short text. It's okay. Last name, short text. Telephone number. So we can choose to make it number or leave it as short text. It will still work. Especially if you have a number that starts with uh, plus two, three, four. Uh, okay. So let's leave it as this. Uh, the address, oh, I misspelled my address. Address, let's equally limit as short text. Okay, so remember to save this 
and uh, our customer ID is our primary key. You can see there. So our custom ID. Paraventure, you're wondering how to, in case you're told to change any of them as your primary key. Select that one, right click, primary key, select, click this, it will still work, okay? okay. Either this icon here, or you right click and you pick this one. So that's how to change it to a primary key. And if it is your primary key, once you click on the very field, this primary key will be active, and then you see this key sign here this key sign here also active let me reduce this a bit okay so you see the key sign there also active okay let me just show you so if i change this you see the key sign has moved so let me take it back all right so i'll do ctrl s and switch back to uh, um, data sheet view okay so this view is the view where we can easily enter the data that we want uh, to enter into our table. Let's go back to the question. Okay. Uh, so we've achieved number A to uh, now to okay, let's say form from table customers and save as reform. So let's create a form from this and save it as reform. So we'll come here to create a form, go to create um you see form wizard i prefer to use form wizard uh because it's simpler for for me form wizard so i'll click here and then remember they say uh since our custom id is auto incremental we do not necessarily need to put it as the selected field in our uh, form because the database is going to handle that automatically for us except there is a direct instruction on how to do this okay so let's say i take all of them in i will take this guy out because i don't need it there okay should i leave it should i take it anyways uh let me just allow it first so so that we can see how um it's going to look like in the form being an auto number all right so I'll click on next uh i will leave it as columnar because i want it to be in columns okay next uh and then so they say we should, we should name it reform right arrow form arrow form in caps so let me do arrow form reform and then i'll click on ok so it's creating the table i mean the um, form for us so this is the form now i do not need to type anything here i just want this to look this way so that all the fields will be represented okay all right so you see our form is here our table that way okay let's move on uh, is it enter 10 records of your choice using the form created in 3A3? Okay, the form created here. So, enter 10 records. So, let's pick arbitrary names. Um, first name, L let me use my name. Oh, it was in caps lock. Uh, my surname, which telephone uh, okay so I put in my number uh, and then address well any address all right so um, okay I believe it has recorded so let's go and uh, confirm. So I would need to close and open this again to confirm it. Okay, it's there. All right, so let's go back to our form and record the next one. Um, I don't know, so I'll just pick arbitrary names here. 
So did you notice that once I typed a name, the custom ID, excuse me, the custom ID immediately uh, increased to two, okay? Uh, oh, look at that mistake there. Look at that mistake there. Did you see it? So let's go back and edit this record. Let's go back to the form. Let's go back to the form. Uh, let's go back. Go this way. Back, back, back. Back, back. Aha. So this should be... Wow, I messed up the whole thing, man. So this should be... Daramola. Let me change it to Daramola. Daramola. Uh, telephone number. Oh, the cherry numbers. So then I go to enter to next. All right. So let me go back and refresh this page. I'll close this and then open it again. Let's see if the change has been effected. Yes, it has. So we have the 10 records as requested. Okay. We'll have the 10 records as requested. So now they say, um, enter 10. Okay, we've done that already. C part says, write a query to retrieve the first name and telephone number. So we should write a query to retrieve the first name and telephone number. Now, to create a query, we go to query. Uh, query wizard okay use simple query go to next remember we want the first name so click on the first name and hit this arrow to push it to selected fields and then the telephone number you hit telephone field and then that arrow to take it away so you do next you do finish so this is the query this is the query of the first name and the telephone numbers all right after that it's a design a report using your tree c design a report so you design a report with this so how do you do that go to still or create then you go to report wizard report wizard i like to use report wizard it's up there okay so i need the these two fields to be in my report okay so i move it this way and then next and then next and then i don't need to sort this so i'll just do next uh, i think leaving it in portrait is okay and in the tabular form i do next and then i can call it my report table query report i could just call it my report so, so i'll just leave it this way finish since they didn't tell us what name to call it finish so uh, the report will soon appear now that is the report now you can change this caption as you please by going to um, a design view or layout view okay you can change this caption as you want okay you could say customers you can change it to customer uh, phone number customer telephone customers telephone okay so this will be fine though you, you were not able to change it but you can okay um, so the next is insert a footer insert a footer and type in your full name and index number I think this footer and index number will be in the reports okay the reports that we have designed in Tracy okay the next part will be to print the report okay so the only thing you're printing here is the report the only thing you're printing here is the report now this is where i usually fault um yx style of practical questions so if you only need the report of the first name and telephone number how would you prove that the students actually created a report from there because i could have uh, created a query first because number one I could have created this very um, this very um, report without creating a query number two I could have uh, also not bothered creating this table in the first place I could have just gone straight to create a table with only two fields first name 
and the uh, the the font numbers that you would need. So, why would you reduce the entire exercise to this alone? So, what proofs do you have that the exam that the student has attempted other parts of the question? that are not captured in this report. All right, that will be a question for the examination bodies to answer. All right, let me go to, uh, to insert my name and my index number. So open this in design view, open this in design view. Okay, so here is the page footer. This page footer simply means whatever that you want to appear on every page that's here. But if you want it to appear at the end of the document, okay, you put it report footer. So I want it is ideal for the name to appear at the at the end of each page, assuming there are multiple pages, which actually we don't have in this case. So I'll just pull this down. Actually, we don't also need this one. This one is the page to show you the page number. This will show you the date and time. So. Since you've done this, you've created enough room for you to insert your index number and your name. So you come to labels, okay? This is label. Click on it once. Come here, click. Okay? As it's blinking, you type your name. And then your reg number. Um, anything goes. I'm not sure what to use. Okay, so this, make sure it's your reg number and your name exactly the way it appears in your registration. All right, so move this up a bit and that, that now. When we, we can save this contrast and then go back to layout view or report view so that you will see the entire work the way it's going to appear. So this is what you're going to get. And then you can print this because this is what you are asked to print. Okay, so how do you print that normal stuff? Go to your control P. Okay, send it to your printer and do okay to be printed. All right, um, that looks like it. I think uh, we've been able to solve this problem as well. Okay, so uh, for those of you that will be going into the exam hall on the 31st of May 2023, I have to write practical uh, computer studies. I wish you the best. You know that the practicals holds uh, the chunk of the question of the marks, 45 marks, all for grabs. Huh? So make sure you grab all of them. Thank you. Please drop your comments, uh, your questions, whatever you have uh, in the comments section below. Um, the, I am going to drop the other links to the other questions, question one and two in the description section uh please don't fail to like share there's somebody somewhere that needs this okay so make sure you get to the person don't be stingy share and like okay and hit the notification button thank you all see you guys next time bye for now